Welcome to the PBL Simplified Podcast. I'm your host, Ryan Stoyer, and can I urge you to share this podcast? However it is that you found it, maybe somebody left a rating or a review and you said, oh, I'm going to go for this one because of that review. Would you leave a review and then share that with somebody? If you found it through an email, forward that email to somebody. If you just went to your podcast player and put in PBL, the PBL Simplified Podcast likely came up. We're in the top 5% of all podcasts. We're the longest running PBL podcast. It's a great resource for you to share with others, other leaders just like yourself who are trying to change things in education. Then you become known as a generous leader that shares resources, and that tends to come back around to you and people start sharing things with you. If you're an educational leader, a visionary leader, that knows that there's a dissonance in education, something that's just a little off but needs to be changed, you've noticed that our learners are passive and could be more engaged. Some of your teachers are starting to burn out. You've got to find your vision again so that you can launch it out to the world. Then you're in the right place. That's exactly what the PBL Simplified Podcast is for. We're going to use project-based learning as our vehicle for educational change. And this podcast is to help you, the visionary leader. So welcome, visionary leader. If you're new to the podcast, today is going to be a PBL Leadership Guest episode. So I bring in a guest from education or maybe just straight from business or sports. Leadership is a universal piece and we can learn from those outside of education. And what I do in a PBL guest episode is I take a guest who might be outside of education and I start to push them, lean them in towards how could you help us here in education? And you're going to hear Jeff McManus today, a very humble speaker who speaks in front of tens of thousands of leaders across the country. He's been featured in the New York Times, in Newsweek. He works at Ole Miss, the University of Mississippi, very large college in in charge of their landscape division. He speaks to executives from Chick-fil-A, people all over the country about leadership. He's got a couple of great books out, uh, Turning Leaders into Leaders, or Cultivate, which is the book that we'll talk about, his newest book we'll talk about in this podcast. So that's one of our last episodes of the month. The first and third Wednesdays, we're going to talk about some leadership idea. Coming up, we're going to do another book study just like we did this month. And then in between, we do a PBL showcase. So if you want to hear what project-based learning sounds like uh, from the teacher's point of view, that's exactly what we're going to do. That's the second Wednesday of the month. Tune in for that PBL showcase. Now, before we jump into Jeff's interview, which is packed full of leadership gold, I want to tell you about the PBL Movement Conference. It's coming up in June, and it's an opportunity for you and your leadership team to come together and experience project-based learning and plan out a three-year implementation plan. If you just listen to the podcast and say, hey, we should do PBL next year, you're probably missing it. You need a plan. You're talking about uh, change in individuals and how they think about your staff doing things differently, a a completely change in instructional model, but more importantly, mindset. You need to plan this out. So we're going to have a conference where we get together innovative leaders, visionary leaders like yourself, and their teams in the same room. So you get feedback from people around the country. You're going to get to build out your plan. We're going to help you build a culture within your leadership team where everybody's on the same page. Then it's not your vision or your mandate coming from the top down. You have your leadership team made up of coaches and teachers and maybe your APs as well, where it becomes a grassroots movement. We've done it with hundreds of schools around the country. We would love to help plan that out with you. It's called the PBL Movement Conference. You'll find a link in the show notes. But right now, I hope you enjoy this episode with Jeff McManus from Ole Miss. All right, PBL Simplified uh, audience, you've got a treat today. Uh, We've got Jeff McManus, uh, who's a good friend. We're in a mastermind together, uh, but that's not why I bring him to you today. Uh, He's got a good leadership message, and he speaks it around the country. Give you a little bit of his bio. Uh, Jeff McManus grows things. So he's the landscape leader at the University of Mississippi. He, so he leads that work, but he also leads it throughout the SEC. His bio says he grows plants, he grows people, and he grows fresh ideas. And he also speaks around the country, been nationally recognized by USA Today, Princeton Review, Newsweek, and the New York Times. Jeff, my friend, thanks for coming on today. Hey, my pleasure. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. I was glad to glad to find a time where we could connect. I'm going to start you off with the same question I ask every guest. So what is your why for the work that you do? Yeah, that's always the question, the uh, the deep question. You always know uh, 
when people talk about the why, you you know it's going to be a, a meaningful area because that's where you tap into the meaningful purpose of what we really do. So two words that we that I use and what I use with our staff is we cultivate greatness. Mm-hmm. Cultivate greatness. That's the purpose, right? And so in plant world, we're we're cultivating a beautiful campus to attract great students that go on and do great things. And so I, I've sort of branded that in my own life is to cultivate Jeff. I've got to cultivate. I've got to continually grow. I've got to continually till up that soil and stay fresh and plant new things and grow. And then you never know who you're going to be with. You, you don't know from employees to people in the audience, what little word, what little nuggets going to encourage them for that greatness in their life. That's good. Cultivate greatness. So you're, you're leading the landscape uh, arena at Ole Miss. Like, what is, what does that mean? Like just for the audience, so audience, you We've got principals on the line here that are listening. We've got visionary leaders, maybe superintendents, teacher leaders. Um, what does it look like to lead landscaping at Ole Miss? Well, we're a very entry level for the university, right? We're we're yeah. the lowest paid people on staff. We're mm. for years. There's the all oh, the perception of you know they're just it's just kind of grounds, right? It's just the folks that don't have the the degrees and so forth. So we what we try to do is build that pride of ownership in our work and our service and how we really support what the university is doing. The university is educating, developing, and growing uh, great students, uh, recruiting great professors and teachers to come and be a part of this campus. Well, what's our role? Well, we learned early on that there was a study put out there, 62% of prospective college students who are visiting the campus for the very first time will make a decision if they're coming to that university based on appearance. And the, and the top wow. driving factors are the, the way the buildings look, the way the landscaping looks, and the, how clean the campus is. Now, I love academics, and, I, and that's why we're here, but none of that didn't even make the top three, right? And so it's all we're very visually oriented. We go to the grocery store, we go to produce, we're looking for the good looking fruit. Same thing on a college campus. People want to know that if you're taking care of the little things, you'll take care of my child. You you know, that's the perception and people, we want them within a 10 seconds going, yep, this is, this is a good fit. I like it here. I, I can see myself going to school here. You know, that's an $80,000, $100,000 decision when we can do that within the first 30 seconds. So that's what we're trying to do. Yeah. And that's, that's one of the reasons I really wanted to have you on Jeff is it's a different look, even for our K-12 educators. Like I want our principals to hear that. Um, I want our, our, our teachers to hear that, that, you know, the, the outlook of the learning environment matters. The parking lot matters, right? The, the landscaping leading up to the front door matters. Uh, you know, we know that there's research around what the learning environment looks like, the classroom. I just saw a classroom on Twitter where the teacher had like these kind of like background glow lights that went all around and it just looked like a neat place to be, right? So yeah. those things matter right off the bat. Well, think about it. When you go to, uh, when the sun is setting, what doesn't look good in front of a sunset? Right. Yeah. And right. So in a lot of ways, we are the sunset for the campus. We're we're mm-hmm. we're the backdrop. We want we want people to go, wow, let's go study outside. Let's go take the class outside. Let's go hang out. Let's go read out there and enjoy that outdoor learning environment. So they got to feel safe, though. Right. So you've got to do the little things. You've got to do that. Got to have an eye for detail, making sure things are clean, making sure fire ant beds are taken care of, all those little silly, you know, the wasp nest. And and you're looking for little distractions, um, all those type of things, and then keeping it clean, trying to keep the noise level down as low as you can so that they can focus and concentrate. So w- we teach our staff when they interact with our customers that if they're working, that – you know, we're working with a piece of equipment. We're, we're to idle down. We're to stop if necessary. We always teach them to make eye contact Mm -hmm. and and we teach them to do a head nod when people walk by, because that's a sign of respect. And and just to be, Hey, honoring of you, we appreciate you being here, but we don't, we don't want to just keep running a piece of equipment 
and just making noise and, and making everybody all upset. So we want to we want to take care of our customers. Yeah, and and I know the building principals that are listening. You know, it, it's a really tough job as a building principal because you have direct reports from you know somebody who might be doing maintenance, landscape, custodial staff to you know a, a teacher that might have a master's degree or a doctorate. So there's this wide v- variety and. And I, I think sometimes it's difficult for principals to know how to lead folks on those, that, such a wide spectrum. So, Jeff, I love your perspective because you're holding a really high standard for your landscaping crew. Like some people might say, well, they're just they're mowing, right? They're mowers, you know, they're you know, they're going to leaf blow and sometimes it's going to be annoying. But you're leading really intentionally. Uh, how do you how do you inspire this group to really catch on to this bigger vision? So you inspire up, right? You challenge people to go up to the next level. And for us, we were we were last place when it comes to the SEC and as far as the way the campus looked. Our budget's was one of the smallest in the SEC. And we're competing against the big giants of in the college world, right? And so what we started telling was a new story. And I was empowered by my bosses to think different. Why not? Why can't we be one of the best of the best? Why can't we be five star? Why can't we be one of the top universities and recruit top students? And we ended up landscaping has become one of our secret recruiting weapons that that when we can uh, football coaches tell us this, that when we can get college students on on campus, prospective students, athletes that they're trying to go after, they say they get them. They get them because they come to this campus. They want to be here. So what, here's how we get our guys to buy in our team is we get our college coaches. I mean, they're the rock stars of the, you know, of the campus, right? They're the ones getting make, making trillions and bazillion dollars. And, and everybody loves watching, you know, football. We get them to come down and talk to our guys and tell them how important they are to recruiting. Yeah. Uh, so Kyle worked for me. He was a 19 year old young man. And he goes, man, I hate putting out pine needles, you know, pine straw. He goes, it gets all these little bumps on me. I goes, I hate it. He goes, and he just stopped and he says, but if it helps coach recruit the next Dexter <laughs> McCluster or Eli Manning, he goes, I'm, a, I'm doing it. I'm, a, I'm in it. And so it was just fun to see a young man buy in to realizing, hey, he's part of something bigger. He's part of helping coach recruit. Yeah, part of something bigger. It's about that vision. We talk about that on the podcast a lot, like, giving your staff a vision to buy into. We all want to be a part of something bigger. And uh, I'm going to go out of order with the questions that I gave you, Jeff. But uh, it, it, it just, for me, this we're, we've moved right into your book, Cultivate. Uh, and I'm a big fan of the content. I'm a big fan of the layout because uh, it's got these small little huddle conversations that you can have. So how have you seen this approach to the story and leadership in these bite-sized pieces? How do you see that work and how do you see it be effective? Well, cultivate the book, which you mentioned, is all about helping leaders cultivate a culture of, of leadership and growth. And so I use just some t- simple terminology, usually that you find in, in most leadership circles, but a lot in landscaping as well. And, and it was designed to be really short stories, so they're memorable, but it gives us something to talk about in a third party. So mm-hmm. take, take for example, uh, we, we use the, you know, uh, adaptable, being adaptable. Well, we can. We want to be proactive in our being adaptable. We don't want our staff to 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 have a a quitting mindset or a victim mindset. Well, I, I, we just can't do it because the students are in the way or whatever it may be. Well, you've already talked about this story being adaptable, and you've read uh, what they've overcome, and it helps plant seeds to a positive culture. I had I had to learn that the hard way because I had such a toxic culture at times where people were just so negative. And it's like, I've got to do something to change the culture and, and cultivate as, as part of that solution is to plant positive stories that we can talk about and create conversations around, get buy-in and, and work through solutions by talking about somebody else and not necessarily talking about us. Yeah. And the principals that are listening, does anybody have uh, a story of maybe some negativity in the faculty room, right? Like it, it's it's not like college degrees that get rid of, you know, negative, 
and a, a negative attitude, right? Like that's everywhere. So as leaders, we have to be intentional about planting that positivity. So you will have a link to cultivate in the show notes. And I think school leaders, I think you need to get that. Like, you know, in your district, it would be great, I think, if your grounds crew went through it. But I think even with your teachers, you could do this because the story, as Jeff said, becomes like this third party that's really bringing the, the, the idea of excellence. And then as a separate party, you know, the leader and the, the staff member, we're talking about this third party story. So I'm not telling you, hey, you need to be more excellent. We're looking at this outside story of excellence. And I, I just love the format. A lot of it came from one of my leaders encouraged us to take field trips. Like when I first came to work at, at Ole Miss, he says, take your take your leaders and take them go look at other college campuses. And, you know, that had never really occurred to me before to do that. Mm -hmm. But we created an experience as I look back on it and reflect going down there together. We got to have great conversation but we also experienced some very negative looks of some of the campuses we went to. And those made big impressions on my staff so much so that they brought those back to, to our campus and they never had, we never had issues like we had seen on these other campuses. So mowing the grass, for example, you know, it needs to look clean, neat when you're finished and not all matted and torn up and everything. And we, when we went to visit a campus, it was just, it was terrible. And I said, well, what was your first impression of that campus? And, and they, they never forgot that. And there's like, okay, mm -hmm. our grass has got to look good. Even when we go on lunch break, it's got to be clean because you never know when somebody's going to drive on our campus for the very first time. And it's the only time we get to make that first impression. So those yeah. experiences, and that's what the book tries to do without necessarily going somewhere. You get to use the book there, sitting there together. Right. Yeah, I, I love the idea of the small, like quick huddles that yeah. can happen every day. The little, the little yeah. bite sized chunk. I think makes makes a lot of sense. So let me switch gears a little bit, Jeff. So you speak around the country uh, about leadership, and you connect it to your work at Ole Miss. So how do you bring plants and leadership together? Well, as as you know, there's so many different stories that you can use. I mean, there we all we, we talk. We have a I have a great uh, leader who who brought me here, and every morning he would go out and pick up the trash on campus, and he invited me my first couple of days when I came to work. He said, "Let's let's meet at my house at six a.m. and walk the campus." So we're walking the campus, and within a few seconds, Ryan, you know what he was doing? He was picking up trash. And so I'm no dummy. Guess what I'm doing? I'm picking up trash, right? But right. that whole thing is, is that we're not too good. I mean, he's a, he was a top, he was a chancellor, the top dog. He was the big, you know, he had all the power. He had all the authority. He had, you know, the big budgets, but he was out there showing us what to do. And so he was getting his hands dirty out in the field. And I know, and we talk about that. Funny thing is I asked him, what are you doing? Uh, he was also pulling some weeds at one time. I said, what are you doing, chancellor? He says, I'm weeding by example, right? So a little play on words. <laughs> and uh, he, that, that was huge for me. So we talk a lot about that in leadership, but uh, one, of the, one of the simple stories that I like to talk about with people is that whenever you grow a plant inside of the house and it's in a pot, after so long, like a year or two years, those roots grow all the way out to the pot, all the way out to the edge. And if you don't transplant that plant or move it up or do something with those roots, those roots start growing in a circle. And it actually is detrimental to the plant because in time, the roots can ask, actually start strangling the other roots and, and it can literally kill itself. It gets what we call root bound. And so you think about the leadership principles in that is that there's just times when we need to break that pot. We need to get out of that. And we need to massage those root ball, you know, that root, those roots and get them growing out and not in a circle and, and where we're not, hmm. where we're not suffocating ourselves and, and allow us to, to grow out. And sometimes, believe it or not, we, they recommend that you take a knife and cut those roots vertically hmm. hard, cut them cut a line through there, cut three or four vertical lines in those roots. So those roots start growing out. Well, that's, you feel like that's painful, but it's good for the plant. It's, it's better for the plant because plant mm -hmm. gets comfortable in that pot. It just stays there. 
and and it's happy, but then it ends up killing itself. So I mean, there you know you can make those parallels there that we we can get real complacent in what we're doing yeah. and not being willing to to do some new things from time to time. Yeah, we talk here about you know learning happening just outside your comfort zone a lot, right? So you get too comfort now. Now we can start using that term. You get root bound. Um, I'll also never forget I was at uh, a high school visit and I was going to do a professional development there. And I was just talking with some teachers outside and I hadn't met everybody yet, Uh, but somebody came in and they picked up some garbage off the ground and threw it away right outside their school. And I later found out actually right in, right in that time, that was the principal. And I was like, man, this is going to be a good day, right? (laughs) Right. When the principal is taking care of, you know, the outside of the building and he's not afraid to bend down, pick up some garbage and throw it away. Like this is going to be a good day. You know, and and it was it was strong strong leadership taking care of all the little things as well as the big things. Well, it's all of our responsibility. It's not it's not just mm-hmm. the the yeah. person we appointed to pick up trash. I mean, let's it's if we all show that we love the place, uh, it feels loved, right? And we have a little mm-hmm. ownership in it, and uh, makes it a little bit more special to be there. Yeah. Now here's here's a question where sometimes there you know, there's an idea that I'm investigating, so then I. You know, I, I get to use the podcast, you know, as, as a way to learn uh, from from guests. I've kind of got my fingers coming together here. But the the idea of succession planning or hiring within. So a lot of school districts will hire and promote their leaders from within. And you know, sometimes they'll get some flack for that. It's like, hey, we should have the best candidate. Sometimes it's great. Like we want to be loyal to our people. So either way, how can school leaders make the most of the practice of hiring from within? How can they do that in the best way? Well, you presented a real a real challenge, and there's not a one size fits all. But I do like growing leaders from within. That's what we have been real successful. But I've also found that I have to be very intentional in growing those leaders. Right. Uh, they I need to intentionally expose them to new things, uh, let them be challenged in new ways, and that I find that if I pick the right person, they're all about that. They're they're not going to push back, right? And I know I picked the right person to help. And so they'll be in charge of certain things for a season or two. And it's really for to help them to grow. Uh, I'm getting ready to retire at the end of the year. And and the, there's a great number two behind me. But, you know, they'll open it up. They'll open it up nationwide. Mm-hmm. But I think he'll have a good inside track because he has done so many things already that is going to really help him. And he doesn't have necessarily the right degree. He has a degree, but he doesn't have an ag degree. And so I think he can, he'll overcome that, though, with his experience. So you said when you find the right person, what's it look like to find the right person? What are you looking for? I think number one is a, is a servant's heart, like a leader. Just, they're there to serve. They're there to make others successful. Right. If, if you if you take care of the people who answer to you and help them be successful and you take care of those that you answer to and and, and help them be successful, our, our job becomes pretty easy. And, and so I'm number one, do they have a servant's heart? Right. And they and they're willing to serve others to to help them be successful. I think that's by far if you want to get into some practicals, I use three C's. I use yeah. are they competent? Can they learn? They don't have to know everything, but can they learn it? Do they have the, are they confident? Two, do they have the character? Can I trust this person, right? And 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 will we grow it? Because it, trust is the foundation. And so the character is huge. And then the last one, you can have the first two, but if you don't have the last one, it's a no-go. And that's chemistry. Do, do they get along with people? Can they, do they have awareness that it's not all about them or, or whatever project they're involved, the awareness that, that if there's others involved and it's a bigger picture to what we have to see, especially I got to think in principal. My dad was a principal for many years in its school system. My mom was a school teacher. And, and you know, you just you see a bigger picture than what sometimes somebody comes in and complains about a little area. They see the bigger picture. Same thing in, in our world, too. And so you've got to be able to help navigate that and let let people see let them experience a little of that the the one thing none of us really enjoys doing is is like writing up people or terminating people or dealing with challenges but we're we're really hurting 
those that answer to us if we don't do that, if we mm-hmm. don't address it. And we're also hurting our A players, our top talent, because we're not addressing some of these deficiencies. It's never easy, but when we do, we're we're gonna we're gonna, we're more grateful afterwards that we actually did it because it'll make them hopefully they're they're gonna become better as well as the team around us as well. Yeah. So you, those three C's: competent, character, and chemistry. Yes. Can you teach those, or do they have to be there to begin with? Well, it's a lot better when they come in with them, right? But, uh, <laughs> That's right, for sure. I, yep. But we do a little thing called leader to leader, L2L with our team. We do it with our with our supervisors, our frontline staff. We do it with everybody, our managers. Mm-hmm. And, the, and the whole point is to help them grow in those three areas. And mm-hmm. some people, yes, their chemistry, they have, they have got, they get along better. They, they, a new self-awareness, I'll tell you, quick story. I had a guy come in after we've been doing leader to leader for about two years. He sat in my desk uh, next in across from me, closed the door. And he says, I just want to tell you how this has really helped our team grow better. We have better teamwork. And then he got real quiet, put his head down, just kind of looked down. He looked up at me. He had water in his eyes and he goes, I was getting ready to divorce my wife. I was getting ready mm-hmm. to leave her. He says, because I thought she was the problem. <laughs> He says, what I realized is he said, I was the problem, right? And he goes, I just want to thank you because leader to leaders help me realize I've got things I've got to work on. And I think so many times in life, uh, we don't reflect enough. We don't think about fixing us. We always want to fix somebody else, right? And so Mm -hmm. that was, that was a nice way of, of him sharing that, Hey, this is making an impact. And, And so I've kept doing it ever since. Yeah. And Jeff, you just have a, a trainer's heart that, um, and you seem to do it with such confidence. Like, so for the, the leaders that are listening, it's like I'm trying to figure out how to convey this appropriately, but, uh, like you're, you're leading a group of, of landscape techs, right? So again, I, I know that there are other colleges and other places that probably don't have any kind of training at all. Like, is that fair to say? Oh yeah. Yeah. We're, right? we're, we're really weird. Yeah, we are. We're, we're yeah, different. Yeah. It's exactly right, but you're so effective in not only doing the job well, not only performing well for the college, but like literally changing lives because you took the chance, right, to invest in this landscaping crew, right? And right. and you've got so many different stories of how successful it's been in people's lives. Like, how do we encourage principals, that principal is listening right now to say, even, you know, did you have some failures in this journey? Like, they're kind of scared to put in you know, this new process, maybe because people won't jump on board, but how do we get people to say, yes, it's worth it to start some of these types of things? Well, I've never been a principal, so I don't know that I can really be fair and address it, but here sure. I had the fear. I had fear of starting some, most everything I've done. I've had fear yeah. and reservation about it. Right. Cause I'm a, I'm a high C on the disc profile, which means, you know, I'm just kind of nerdy and analytical, right? And uh, I don't necessarily want to take the front role if I don't have to. But I started small. Like I, I always okay, tried good. to get enough people. Like when I started leader to leader, L2L, I didn't do it with everybody. I have, you know, 50 something people total with all four departments I have. I didn't start it with everybody. I, I started it small and I started with six people. And, and then I did some of my leaders and, and, and I got buy-in and people were liking it. Then I would start another group and um, it just, I just had to do it small. And I've done that all the time. Try to get some wins, right? Mm-hmm. Get a few wins under your belt. So you, you have some momentum, you have some people who are, are your champions and in, in, in what you're doing and they understand. I've always tried to work with I don't know if principals have to work with human resource on things and, and, or not, but like I've always tried to get in human resources on my side in the sense of being transparent on what we're doing and, and letting them know because somebody's going to show up at their office or something and complain, which they did for about me and complained about leader to leader. And, you know, I, you'd be surprised. You, you would think it's, I mean, it was some of the ones I thought who were the most bought in when and complained about me. And, you know, we had, we had their support because they knew what, I think they knew what we were doing because I had been so transparent. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, the, the fear is real, but, but don't, yeah. don't. And what I learned too, is don't try to do it in a big group. Don't try to 
do these things as a big group because you, your negative leaders are going to stand up and try to get you off track and keep their, they're going to try to keep that negativity going toward them and, and keeping people rallied toward them. So I just learned to do small groups and we lost a lot of our, our negativity lost its influence because they didn't have an, they didn't have an audience. People quit talking with them. So, you know, just, they just Mm -hmm. lost the audience and uh, we call them dramanators, right? We call those people (laughs) who cause that problem dramanators. And they, they, after nine months, the dramanator came to me and said he had a new job at a new location. It it was a win-win, right? So, yeah, right. (laughs) That's super good. So we're going to roll right into that actually in your, your Ted talk, your TEDx talk, uh, Sugarland, I think it was, um, yeah. you talk about the plantain weed and kind of related that to a difficult staff member. Now, every visionary leader listening right now, like they have that staff member. So can you tell us that story? Yeah, we all have that staff member. And and when they leave, they transfer the flag to somebody else. So <laughs> you're uh, always going to have them. But but what what's happening? So the so we have the grove here, ten acres of grass, and we try to grow tall fescue in it because it's deep shade. We're in the south, so that's hard to grow tall fescue in the summertime. It's just it's just too humid and hot. So this weed comes up called plantain, and so we used to fight it. We 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 would fight it over and over and try to take it out, and then eventually we just said, you know what, plantain is good. You can actually put it in your salad. Uh, it's great for ant bites and sting- bee stings. So we just started leaving it. And, and, and we realized, that, you know, maybe it's it's really helping because the grove's compacted with all the foot traffic we have. So we, we ended up changing our perspective. What helped me in that was I had some I had a couple of young employees who were really troublemakers. I mean, they were just instigators. They were just that those people that everybody's happy when they leave. Right. And then, and so that's kind of my mindset is I got, I want, I want these guys to sort of head on down the road. And so we were doing leader to leader. Uh, We started creating more training classes and I started being more intentional about growing the culture, growing the culture. And I found out these guys had a very, a deeper interest in deer hunting, right. Going out and hunting. And so they tapped into the tree world, like trees out in the woods and, Mm -hmm. and it would help them in their hunting. And, and so they started, it's kind of that spark we needed for them to realize, you know, that you can actually make a career in this and you can enjoy it and become really smart in it. And, and now these, these two guys have become two of my best mentors for my new team members. And, And when people come to visit our campus from the outside, I let them speak to these two because they're very open about how they were really re- I guess what you would like to say rebellious or just just not with the program. And then how they came over and now are a big part of our mentoring and coaches and help our students who we bring in a lot. I've, I've gotten emails from former students who worked here complimenting these two gentlemen on how they spoke into their lives and how they helped them while they were in school. I mean, that's that's a that's when you realize that, hey, there there's value there. They're strong leaders, but they're leading in the wrong direction. And right. I had to own that. That was my fault. Mm-hmm. So I started intentionally changing the culture. And that's when I, and I give that credit. I mean, it took it took a couple of years before that really we started seeing the fruit of that. Yeah, I mean that's the Jacko Willink extreme extreme ownership, right? Like you owned yeah. their their rebellious nature, which is interesting, right? It's easy for us to push that off. Yes, and I I love that culture is kind of the answer for that, both for our principals, and then how do they how do we communicate that to our teachers when we have rebellious students? Like they are leaders, they're just leading the wrong direction. That's so right. How can we create a culture that invites them into the positive side of that? You're right, exactly, and that that's why small groups help. When so that the, they didn't have a huge audience, and and it was also, also the time became a little bit more. I don't know if the right word is intimate, but it became more meaningful when we mm-hmm. met together. And then they found themselves like ah, light bulbs coming on, like well, okay, yeah. And, and we would expose them to great teachers and and some some of the things and on video. It was just it was just refreshing to see. It's so nice now that those two are still with us. 
I'm glad they didn't leave and it became a big part of our program here. Yeah, that's such a great testament to your leadership and the culture that you've created there at Ole Miss. So, Jeff, thanks for joining us today. I think there's a, a ton of value in there uh, for our leaders that are listening. They need, probably need to go back and listen to this one again. How can our audience connect with you, Jeff? What's the best way for them to do that? Well, I'm, I'm jeffmcmanus.com. And, of course, my email address is jeff at jeffmcmanus.com. So I'm on yeah, just an easy Google search away. Yep, that's right. And so, you know, we've got some big districts that are listening. You need Jeff to come talk to your landscaping crew, like just undoubtedly. And I think even principals, you know, you need to, to reach out to Jeff as well. His idea of these small huddles and the emphasis on culture transfers way beyond landscaping and, and definitely into our world and education. Jeff, thanks for being with us today. Thank you so much, Ryan, and keep up the good work. For sure. All right, visionary leaders, thank you for joining us today on the PBL Simplified podcast. A lot of good leadership tips here so we can help you be the best visionary leader that you can be and bring your vision off the paper and into your school so you can engage your learners, tackle boredom, and transform your classrooms. Go lead inspire. Thank you for listening to this episode of the PBL Simplified Podcast. Would you help us achieve our vision of 51 by 2051? One small step you can take to help us out is to leave a review of the PBL Simplified Podcast. Scroll down to the bottom of our show page, select a star rating, and leave a review. Your review helps others find this podcast. When you leave a review, the next visionary leader will see your words and join us. Thank you for leading Inspired. Thank you.